first time last night because the team they were working on it back in Riyadh yesterday. So it's not fantastic, but I think you'll appreciate it. And basically, I think given the time, I think excuse me, but the team did a damn good job. Anyways, this basically Dar al Riyadh, but this image right here is what we do in Dar al Riyadh. We do not do as some of the speakers talked about yesterday, it's not the typical straight across linear design. We're trying to create excitement. This right here is a central garden area within a project called Partisan so that the people can walk around and enjoy the landscape. The, if any of you are familiar with the Saudi culture, typically they don't go outside. Typically there's not a lot of family involved in outside. That is changing. Uh, I've worked with uh, the gentleman within, actually in the landscape architecture team has a lady, Saudi, that works on it. But talking with them, it's changing. They are now cycling. They are now doing more family activities. Uh, and they want to see more creativity. So basically what we're doing in Dar al Rad is bringing that to the people. You can see here, here's another feature. What we're doing is instead of just the typical playground in a sand area, because trust me, Saudi Arabia's got enough sand. So we're trying to include creative structures. Uh, one of our major suppliers, we use two suppliers right now for play structures, one of them is here, landscape structures. Basically, we know that they're gonna cost more, but maintenance in Saudi Arabia is not a big thing. So you have to have something that's very durable. Unlike here in Dubai, where there is maintenance and they understand all that, Saudi Arabia is a different culture. It gets built, and when it all falls down, you tear it and build another one. So we're trying to build this, because we're trying to make this sustainable. Well, go back, please. Oh, go for it. Okay, this project here is our mall. This is slightly different in that it's for the expats that come to Saudi Arabia. But again, we're trying to include a lot of green. Actually, in between these units here is a fitness trail that has somewhere 12 or 14 different areas. Big pools, this pool right here is basically what we call the lagoon pool. It has a very tropical look to it. There's a pergola in here that was designed by our architect who is from the Philippines. So again, it has a very kind of Asian look to it. If you go to the next slide, please. This, when you come into the project, you come into the entry. Again, instead of the typical all paved, all going on. We're bringing pavement in. All the projects that we work on in Saudi Arabia are irrigated off a sewage treatment plant. So basically, we're limited to whatever the output of that plant is. So what we try and do is put as many trees in as possible and then work within how much water we have left over to get as much green as possible. It's kind of funny because in Saudi Arabia, they say lawn areas use less water than shrubs, which is kind of counterproductive to my experience in Southern California where lawns are suck water and so we plant with plants, but that's what I have to deal with. This here, we want to be able to show this, by the way, all these pictures of our mall are a model. So you can see the quality of the model. What we wanted to show here is a progress to show what we're doing is instead of the typical walkway just running up the middle and connecting all the dots, we provide the people with this main pool area that you're coming out of the leasing office and they can go in several different directions to get to the same place. We change the, the materials, we change the experiences. Right here is one of the playground areas and then you can see we have the the tropical pool back here. We have more of a, a uh, traditional pool, but what we have done here, again, because 
the climate in Saudi Arabia, as much as you guys think it's hot here, it's really hot in Riyadh. <laughs> so what we have here is something that is very popular in Las Vegas. You have, you step down a couple steps and you have lounges that are in the water. So you can, people can lay in the water and be up to the, basically their chest underwater. It's a wonderful experience if you all oh, haven't done it. So it to provide that uh, access. Next slide, please. Okay, and again, this is kind of going back to that. You can see that, again, you know, try and incorporate not just lines but curves so that when you walk into this space, you kind of get a glimpse of what's beyond, but not the whole total experience. Again, the play areas are featured because the kids and the moms, dad picks the kids up at school at noon. And then, so the kids and the moms are sitting there all day. Now in July and August, they're not gonna do a whole lot outside. But during the rest of the year, this provides the family to go out and have an activities because in Saudi Arabia, if you all don't know, women cannot drive. So they're gonna rely on taxis and Saudi women do not really trust taxi drivers. It's just part of the culture there. So again, if you understand the culture, it helps you to understand what you have to design. Again, you come into here to the Middle East, uh, of the, the uh, UAE, the culture here is a multicultural. Saudi Arabia, especially in Riyadh, and most of the areas other than Jeddah and uh, Hobar are much more international. Everything else is very much Saudi culture. Here's another slide of that project. Basically, we always provide a pergola. The, the play areas have to have pergolas to provide shade. You have to have seating. And I worked on uh, a project in Santa Ana, California for several months with some ladies, several of them were pregnant. And I can tell you, if you sit down with ladies once a week for two months, you learn a whole lot about how to design a playground. You learn that playgrounds have to have variety. If it's in a neighborhood, especially uh, RR, which is 6.8 million square meters, has 44 playgrounds because each one is in different neighborhoods. Again, they don't have cars, so they have to be able to walk. They have to have accessibility. They're not giant playgrounds. The giant playgrounds are in the main core of our art. You'll see that in the future. But yeah, we're going back to cars now. Yeah. Okay, well this is Majarda, right? Okay, this is Majarda. Again, you can see we're trying to provide variety to get into it. Instead of, as some of the people said yesterday, getting away from the typical Middle Eastern, put the sidewalk down the middle, run connections. This is to provide uh, basically some visual excitement along with the way we're doing it, again with staying within the limits of the sewage treatment plant output. We are providing sustainability along with the materials we use are mostly natural if we can. Uh, or the concrete, we use a lot of concrete pavers. But again, when it's all done, you grind them up, make rocks, and they can be recycled, reused. So, sustainability is a big portion. Here, well, hold on, just go up. This is our, this is a portion of 6.8 million square meters. It has a huge wide that goes through, and if any of you are familiar with the uh, town of RR, they have, last year or year before, they lost seven people that got trapped in the water. So one of the things that we wanted to do is try and incorporate safety. So we have the bridge, just you can't see it, this, this image here. What we've done is we provide a little dam that slows the water down to hopefully save the people from you know getting drowned in the water. The dam has, and again, you can't see this image, because this image is kind of a lower resolution than I would have liked to have. There is a light tower. When the water reaches 
the level that it flows over the dam. The light tower has a globe in it that lights up every night. But when the water goes up to the end, there's lights at the top that everybody knows that there's a flood. Saudi Arabia, when it rains, it's a serious rain. The water in the behind the dam will probably only be there maybe a week at the most, because again, it rains and then it gets seriously hot. But at least it does that. What we've also done, and you can't see it here because it's showing the water, we provide little gabions in there. So again, water's only in the water about a week out of the whole year. So we have walkways that go across, gabions, so people can actually use the wadi instead of it just sitting there for the year. This right here is the central core of the park area. Uh, excuse me, I gotta get kind of <laughs> settled around here. Okay, that's the first way. We have two park areas here. One, we try to include inclusive play. And if you're not familiar with inclusive play, it's for people, primarily children, with handicaps. They, all the structures have ramps, and which is actually very nice because now the mom or dad, instead of being so left out of the children playing, can actually go onto it if they're in a wheelchair by themselves. The children can go on the wheelchairs. They have, we have a uh, accessible zip cruise, which you'll see at the landscape structures, which, I don't know if they'll let you ride it because they probably can't get it, but if you can ride that thing, it's a whole lot of fun. So imagine you're a child that's been in a wheelchair. If you can get out of that wheelchair and essentially fly across to the other side, on this site, I think we use a 50 foot or 66 foot versus the one here is the shorter 40. It, just excitement, and that's, as landscape architects, we're not just collecting money and putting a project out. I think it's our responsibility to provide excitement in people's lives, to provide them with a sense of place so that they're proud to say, I live in RR, come on and visit me. Or I live in Al Ramal, come see where I live. That's what landscape architects do. It's very easy to just sit there and collect some money. Uh, I've worked for companies where that's all we did. <laughs> you put the project out, make the client happy, and it's done. That's why I don't work for them anymore. Okay. okay. This is uh, in a blow-up area of RR. You can see, again, we have the walkways, but a lot of trees, again, provide shade. Off on the side here, we have Here's one of the mosques. What we do is, one of the things is, typically if you go to Saudi Arabia, the first thing the landscape architect does is put the perimeter sidewalks all around off the streets and then connect the dots in between. What we do is, if, especially at mosques, is you take the paving out, cut that sidewalk. You try and want to create a visual stimulation for the, the passengers, passengers, pedestrians, for the pedestrians. So when they're walking along, it's not the same walk because people will follow the path. It's kind of like following the, the uh, yellow brick road. Here, when they walk across, you can kind of see in the background. If they're walking along the sidewalk, this pathway actually comes in and intersects that standard walkway. So they see something different. Again, visual stimulation it makes you want to go and look and see what's down there, but the path is not straight. It has a curve to it. This is a, another blow up of that area. You can see again, people walking on the sidewalks. We do a lot of curvilinear places. This, I'm trying to see which structure I'm at. Sorry. One of these structures, I can't remember which one it is. Again, we try and include inclusive play where, wherever we can. It doesn't mean it's a whole big structure, but you don't want to make it so that this child can play and this one can't. You want them to be able to interact. That's what we're trying to do, and that's the biggest thing we're trying to do. 
for Saudi Arabia is allow people to interact. The things that we like about, hold on here, the things we like about the big structures is when kids are playing on this piece, instead of them playing on the swing by themselves and on the slide by themselves and on the things by themselves, they're interacting, they're playing with each other, they're learning how to share, how to do all these things together. Basically, there's been studies by the companies that have shown that it helps with child development. It helps with when they grow up to be adults, that they actually learn these characteristics. It's embedded into their mind to do these things correctly. But basically, the biggest thing I'm trying to get out of this whole presentation to you all and what the people were talking about yesterday is to get away from the simple thing. Spend a little more time. You can't create these designs. Granted, we can probably pop these out. I could have probably finished RRI. I couldn't have done it all by myself. The team probably could have finished RR in a couple weeks if they did this simple design. But it took them a couple months because they're doing this. So there's a cost from the company to create this design, but look at what you get. There's an incredible lifetime of value to this for a short-term cost to the company. What you do though is a business is hopefully you charge them for this so you're not losing money. And we're all, as much as I love being a landscape architect, I do like the paycheck. So, again, another piece kind of showing you we use different plant materials, different colors, different textures, different visualization. Again, it's eye stimulation. You need to do that incorporate it into your design. Otherwise, you're just going to have another design. Typically in Saudi Arabia, you drive around, you're going to see kind of a, everything is an olive green. What we're trying to do is use plants that have color. Again, like yesterday, sustainability. You have to use as much native as possible. Saudi Arabia and native plants is not a huge list. So what we've done, is we use plants that have been imported into Saudi Arabia that are water concert, excuse me, water conservative. Again, because we are limited to water. Little different than the Gulf area here in the UAE when you're surrounded by water. Saudi Arabia is surrounded by water, but only on the coast. There's a whole lot of desert in between. So we have to work within those limitations. That's it. I went faster than I was thinking. Well, thank you. Like I said, I was hoping that the play structures, they would normally put color on them. They normally do these things, but the team did a fantastic job. And hopefully, you all learned something. You got any questions? I'm oh, sorry, can you tell me something? Yes. Yes. How prevalent is underground, uh, How prevalent is, uh, underground irrigation? It's starting to uh, take root here, you know, um, rainbird and so on. Because it saves up to 80% more water than the uh, drip irrigation on the surface, right? Uh, I, again, it's a good question. And again, Saudi Arabia is kind of a funny place. I don't say it's bad, it's not it. They are really not into innovation. It's, it's a slow process. Uh, we started, when we started working on the project two years ago for the Ministry of Housing, they wanted, the team proposed LED lighting. And at first they're like, no, there's no way. We don't know what that is. We don't know how it works. Then they're being maintain it. And actually now we are using it. So it took two years. Uh, like I say, Currently, Saudi Arabia standards say that lawn areas use less water than shrubs, which everything I know of, uh, Southern California has, uh, oh shoot, I can't think of what it's called, 
but there's a whole standard that uh, Cal State 